afternoon to everybody. I'd like to thank the conference organizers for inviting me to this meeting. It's good to see old friends. Prabir is there. And meet new colleagues. In the interest of time, allow me to go straight to the heart of my presentation. Now, in my opinion, the Eavri Biyamaputra River Based Regional Cooperation has four interlinked major components. And we should keep that in mind. One is Northeast India. Two is non Northeast India based cooperation, such as Calcutta to Yangon or Delhi to Napier or Lynx. Number three, economic or transport corridors, which make strategic use of Myanmar's geographically strategic location, such as the India Myanmar Thailand Trilateral Highway or the Kaladan River Corridor. And the fourth, and certainly not least, uh, a component of India Myanmar cooperation is ASEAN plus plus agreements and the forthcoming RCEP. And that is coming. We don't know if it's this year, next year, or when, but it is, I think, coming. So all of this is historically recent. I mean, it's uh, the past. I've been listening to the Look East India uh, idea started around 1991. Uh, the, the concrete uh, proposal started around 2005. So that's not too long ago. They're recent. They're wonderful. And in many cases, economic, logistic, academic, and cultural projects have already delivered mutually beneficial uh, outcomes. As a Myanmar citizen, I must both thank and congratulate India for its vision and generosity. I also believe that a golden age of cooperation is just around the corner. However, having said that, almost after almost 30 years of practical experience in regional cooperation in all parts of Asia, as well as other parts of the world, the, my experience forces me to be a bit more cautious. Asia and Africa are littered with unsuccessful regional, regional cooperation experiments. And even when it's successful, it takes huge amounts of time, money, mutual understanding, determination, and the right combination of public-private partnerships to achieve success. If we are to make genuine progress in the near future, ladies and gentlemen, we need to be brutally honest about outstanding problems in four areas, not including law and order and security, which is a different different category, which I won't go into. I'm an economist, not a, not a diplomat or any, any of these things. But I think even without the law and order situation, we have four issues that we need to look at. The first one is physical connectivity. The second one is what is usually called soft infrastructure or institutions and policies governing regional cooperation. The third is actual realization of net economic benefits and the distribution of these benefits between different actors and states. I realize that that's a fairly long statement. So let me repeat again, because I've been saying this for over the past 25 years, and it has been given short shrift until the recent debacle in EU. So let me repeat again, actual realization of net economic benefits and the distribution of these benefits between different actors and states. And the fourth point is people to people cooperation, which different people have uh, said already. Now, I submit that there are problems in each of these four major areas. The 100 page 2016 paper by a person called Dr. Das, I think from the Indian government, does a good job of discussing the challenges from the Indian perspective. And if a similar report were to be prepared by the Myanmar side, another 20 pages could probably be easily added. So I won't do that. Anybody wants to see what the, most of the problems are, you can refer to the, the Das paper of 2016. And also the, our ambassador, the Myanmar ambassador has already said that the volumes have gone down, the basket of goods is traded has also gone down, and there are some other issues as well. So in the interest of time, I have six minutes, so let me recommend six short-term actions that we can, we can consider. Number one is, and complete the remaining infrastructure required for physical connectivity by 2021 or 22. As one of my engineer colleagues, he who likes to needle me, likes to point out, no transport, no trade. So no matter how many the good theories I have in economics, without the transport, you have no trade. Simple as that. Number two, improve physical facilities at major border crossings to enable year-round economic activity. And here I think the word is year-round. The weather, the climate in that part of the world is very, very brutal. Okay, rainy season, you have no activity as well. So as, as Dr. Day, previous uh, pictures show, things haven't really improved. It's still very, very rudimentary in the border crossings. So we have to build warehouses. We have to have proper truck terminals, which have good environmental conditions. Okay, electricity, safe water and sanitation, etc. So these things have to be done. 
where the money for that will come, I have no idea, but they have to be done. A third point is improve border crossing procedures. And there are four sub issues here. One of the first one is adopt the single window procedures which are now being used in almost all ASEAN countries. I think single, single window has been used in all, oh, all countries except Myanmar. And conceptually, we, have, we know how to do it. And also, we also have plenty of lessons on how not to do it from the other ASEAN countries. So why can't we do this? Improve SPS, sanitary and phytosanitary procedures and facilities, such as labs, laboratories, since much of the trade will be food-related items, lentils, rice, tea, etc. So you have to do that to prevent negative externalities from occurring and also uh, epidemics, or uh, zoonotic uh, issues. Number three, implement efficient cross-border labor and population movement protocols while addressing concerns about illegal migration. Now, I don't know which country fears illegal migration more, Myanmar or India, but every time you talk to non-economists or non-transport people or non-people who haven't really bought into this ARD Chauvia, sorry, ARD Brahmaputra cooperation scheme, they will raise this issue of illegal migration or, Ill or illegal movement of illegal persons. So what you have to do is not only come up with an efficient protocol for normal people or legal people, but how to deal effectively with the illegal ones as well. And final point is to deal effectively with smuggling and rent-seeking activities, which is easier said than done, but is necessary for fiscal reasons, as well as ensuring fair competition. There's a huge amount of rent-seeking, self-serving behavior at the borders, let's be honest. And to deal with that, you need strong policies either at the local level not either at the local level, but at the local level supported by the government from the central level as well. It's not easy to do. Both sides also, also prepare, and the fourth uh, suggestion I have is that both sides should prepare an annual quote unquote, ease of doing business report card to provide a common basis for moving ahead. Okay, this is done in ASEAN. It's, um, it's a fairly, and I don't suggest the same sort of uh, long document, which becomes an exercise in its own right, but I think it's fairly important that both sides are involved. Number five, policies are frequently more important, difficult than projects to implement. So start work on the following three policy issues, which have been shown to be complex and time consuming matters in other regional cooperation programs. The first one is, okay, road safety and minimizing overweighting of trucks. Unfortunately, newer, um, newer roads is associated with more deaths. Okay, and this is, a, this is, we've seen all over Southeast Asia and you've seen it even in Myanmar as well. Okay, okay. number two, some sort of cross-border transport agreement to minimize transport co costs and time is ne needed. My, from my own experience, I, I was working um, on the cross-border transport agreement for, a, for the GMS, the Greater Mekong Subregion in I think 1997. I left in 2015 and they were still working on this issue. So these things take a long time, but at least we have some lessons, positive and negative, to learn from other countries in the GMS, as well as what we call the Central Asian Republic uh, Economic Cooperation. A third point is the transit fee agreement. I haven't seen, I haven't come across any discussion on this. I am not sure what the Kaladang Corridor Agreement is or whether one even exists, but you will need one, believe me, if you want to really use the Indian, India, Myanmar, Thailand uh, corridor to get to uh, to other parts of Southeast Asia. Now, again, you don't have to start from scratch. There's plenty of this uh, sort of stuff that we see in, in the EU as well. And finally, and this is a point that everybody has mentioned, so this is my final point, get people to know each other by holding annual trade fairs and study tours, especially between Infal, Kohima, and Dimapur on one side, and major towns in Zagain, Mandalay, and Chin regions. My view is that this, is, this will result not only in more trade and investment opportunities, but will also create a deep and lasting basis of support for further cooperation between the peoples of the two countries. Thank you very much.